Thanks, Dr. Jepson. Uh, first, I probably need to explain to at least a few people in the room what is the American Association for Agricultural Education. Uh, there are actually three professional societies for public school ag educators in the country. Uh, there are state supervisors. Those are people paid by the state government in each of the 50 states, territories, whatever, who are supervisors, uh, somewhat regulatory, somewhat leadership, so they have their organization. And then there is an organization of the practicing teachers, the National Association of Agricultural Educators. So those are the public school ag teachers. There's a whole bunch of them. And we are the university faculty, uh, the American Association for Agricultural Education, primary focus in preparing the next generation of, of school-based ag education, high school, secondary school ag teachers, uh, also responsible for providing uh, in-service education for practicing teachers in each of our states. And then for many of us, we also have an extension education component helping to prepare our county extension agents or educators, whatever the state calls them, and then uh, maybe some ag comm and or ag leadership in part of our programs. But the organization itself is primarily made up of faculty members who are preparing and providing uh, professional development activities for uh, school-based ag education teachers across the country. So that's what we're all about. Well, so a little bit about secondary school ag -like education. There are approximately 11,500 teachers of agriculture uh, in the United States. That number uh, was up and then it was uh, down to about 10,000 in 1992. Uh, the supply and demand study that our profession uh, sponsors every two or three years indicates that there's something around 11,500. There are about 850 new teachers uh, uh, employed each year. And most of them teach a combination of career pathways, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Mike Honeycutt talked about the eight career pathways earlier today. Now, it's also important for us to think about who are they teaching. They're teaching a lot of students, a lot of students. And you might ask, how many? We have no idea. Now, here's why. Uh, education is the responsibility of the states, not the federal government. Education is not included in the U.S. Constitution, and frankly, some of us believe that that's a good thing. Uh, education ought to be at the lowest common denominator, and that happens to be state government and public school systems. We know that in FFA, there are almost 600,000 members. Each of those kids would be in involved in school-based ag education, but we know that there, that's not 100%. For example, in Florida, we have 17,000 FFA members. We know from state statistics there are 60,000 students studying school-based ag education, grades 6 through 12. We have seven years of school-based ag education going from a nine-week course for sixth graders all the way to full-blown career and technical education programs for high school kids. So probably well over 800,000, maybe a million students of, of school-based ag education someplace in the country. Um, now, this is, this is not a sexist or sex stereotype piece of information. It's just the truth. 30% of the, of the secondary school teachers of agriculture in the country are female. 50% of the student teachers are female. So we see the trend continuing to grow to have more female high school ag teachers. Well, that's good from, from my estimation from a role model standpoint, but there are some caveats there that could be somewhat concerning for the topic that we're talking about yesterday and today. And by and large, there's an increasing number of these new teachers, these 850 or so that we bring into the profession every year who have no personal experience in secondary school ag ed. They never took high school agriculture themselves and therefore there's no role model, if you will, to understand what is a program and what should it be like until they come to us, the universities. And then of course we tell them, teach them everything they need to know and they're gonna be very highly, that was sarcastic, you know. We just get them prepared to become teachers and then hopefully lifelong learners of teaching and learning. Well, there are about 90 programs of ag education uh, across the country. There's at least one in every state. Some states have a couple. Uh, Illinois has floor. Texas has nine or 10 or 15 or whatever. Texas is big. Uh, so there are 90 programs where we're preparing teachers and working with in-service teachers. Now, this, this next uh, uh, number, I have to admit, is also a bit sleazy. I went to the directory of AAAE, it's online, and I actually went person by person by person, A through Z, because that's the way they are, and tried to identify 
based on their research expertise and or the courses that they teach, who, who are the teacher education people, ag teacher education, who have a background, interest in skills, abilities, whatever, in ag mechanics, which of course has a lot to do with the laboratory and therefore has an awful lot to do with, uh, with, with safety. I found 12, okay? Half of them are in the western region, which is the second smallest region number-wise. We're never sure whether Texas is in the south or in the west. Uh, when the western region meetings are in Hawaii, they, they're in the west. <laughs> when the southern region is in Dallas, they're in the south. So at any rate, when, when you add those, you know, well, uh, just that's where they are. Now, that's so curious to me because we could say, well, there's no agriculture in the eastern half of the United States. Well, that's clearly wrong because the Midwest is not in the West. So when we're talking about those big ag production states, you know, the Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, southern Minnesota, the Great Plains states and all those, there's not maybe a teacher educator there who, who has a, a background or skills in ag mechanics. And then when we think of the, of the Atlantic coast, the Northeast, there's still a lot of agriculture there. There are no ag ed, teacher ed programs north of Pennsylvania, by the way. Cornell just got rid of theirs. So the whole Northeast, there are none, but there's still agriculture there. They're just not 5,000 acre farms. 5,000 acre farm in Rhode Island is Rhode Island. But there's a lot of intensive agriculture that is taught there. And a, a, a lot of uh, part-time workers, perhaps even migrant workers, we have tons of migrant workers in the state of Florida. And there is not one well, maybe the King Ranch, but uh, there, 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 there aren't 5,000 acre farms in Florida, but it's a huge agricultural production state. A lot of strawberries, blueberries, you name it, we grow it. There is a de-emphasis, my observation over the years, of ag mechanics skill development in our school-based ag ed programs and in our teacher education programs. And, and Bill, the question then is that, you know, chicken or the egg, uh, is there less at the school level because we're not doing it at the university, or are we not doing it anymore at the university because there's no need at the secondary school level? I don't know, but it's, it's true. In many states, one certificate fits all. For example, again, in Florida, once you have a certificate to teach agriculture under the laws of the state of Florida, you can teach anything. And it might be cotton and peanut and corn in LA, which is lower Alabama, that's North Florida. Or it might be uh, uh, ferns and other greenhouse uh, beautiful ornamental crops. It might be strawberries in suburban Tampa. It might be sugar cane, sugar cane in the far south. There were lots of vegetable crops in, in, in Palm Beach County, which is the number one ag uh, state that we have, even though it's also the richest county in the state. You can teach anything. So then the question, Oh, the whole notion that, so, so then what should we be preparing them to teach and the whole notion of agricultural safety and working with students and all these sorts of things when some of these, some of these students, SAE, uh, Mr. Honeycutt talked about that yesterday and this morning, they're, they're going to be operating equipment and others are going, to be, are going to be working in greenhouses and confined spaces and using chemicals and air movement and all those sorts of things. That's a question. I don't have an answer for that. And then, to complicate things, uh, you know, we've talked about Common Core. Florida is not a Common Core state. I'm not sure it makes any difference whether you are or you're not, because since states are responsible, are, are responsible for public education, we do our own thing anyway. Well, Florida is just more blatant about it. We don't fund education very well either, so why would we want to have any more standards? There are state standards. There's high-stakes testing. All of those drive the curricula. And I really like the AFNR career pathways. Those are the eight. Mike talked about those uh, twice already. Those are great. However, there is no meat behind that. There is no oomph behind that because there's no federal mandate there. So we use that as leadership in helping our teachers develop what it is that they ought to be teaching. But there are no requirements from the AFNR career pathways and those standards because education is the responsibility of the state. And if you're teaching in the state of Florida, you better have essential questions that meet the Sunshine State standards and the Florida fr frameworks for career and technical education or else you're not gonna be teaching very long. So then what is it that we should be doing to make sure we're meeting all these standards? Uh, most safety and health sorts of skills are taught within the context then of a career pathway. It isn't that everybody teaches a unit on this sort of thing and then gets on with life. It's taught as it goes through. So then the question is, where, where are the materials? How are we equipping these uh, public school teachers to teach 
uh, to have those, those skills and those competencies embedded into whatever career pathway, whatever program area they're in. We also see a decrease in the number of, the number of facilities that have been historically called ag mechanics labs. There again, I don't know whether it's because ag mechanics is no important in the local school community, no longer important, or the teachers don't have the skills and abilities to teach those sorts of things, so they just kind of ignore them. I, I don't know, but it's, but it's a, an issue for us. And then if you are a teacher, a young teacher, just graduated from one of our programs, 90 programs across the country, and you go into a high school that has a 4,000 square foot ag mechanics lab, what do you do with it? Are you prepared not only to teach the skills, but also to make sure that the kids are safe? Increasing then specialized facilities in food science, biotechnology, and, and so what, what are the safety procedures and all of those sorts of things related to biotechnology lab, our case curriculum workshops, uh, uh, do a lot in biotech, ag biotechnology, what does that mean for uh, the preparation of teachers and the in-service education, professional development of our, of our teachers in the public schools. Well, I show you then just one example of state standards related to ag safety. This is from Florida. Now, there are 23 secondary school core programs in ag education in Florida. You can teach 23 different subject matter areas, about 18 more than we need. That was an aside. I'm not in charge of this, okay? So these, these career and technical education standards and benchmarks for one program, this is found, Fundamentals of Agri-Science. This would be kind of like VOAG-1 back in the old days when I started teaching high school ag in Ohio. So you see them there, uh, you know, uh, the, the whole notion of uh, basic mechanical skills and then identifying some hardware, da 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 identify controls and safely operate a farm tractor, basic operation of internal combustion engine, um, that's kind of it, okay? That's kind of it. Now, this is one standard. This is standard 4.0 out of one program. So then what, what is it that ought to be taught? What is being taught? Now, here's the bottom line of what I want to share with you. The need is great. The need is great for those of us in teacher education because we have teacher educators. We, we have all taught high school ag that is required by state standards, but we might not have taught the kind of high school ag that is in the state where we're preparing teachers. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an Ohioan, you know? We didn't have commercial strawberry production outside Columbus, which is where I grew up on a farm. You know, I know beef, cattle, hogs, corn, wheat, soybeans. That's what I know. But now I'm a teacher educator in Florida where we have all this stuff. So where do I get the material, the wherewithal, the competencies to teach, to prepare our, our teachers. And then, uh, so not only for the teachers themselves, but also for those of us who are teacher educators, I have to also admit that I had never heard of at least half the organizations that are represented in this room. And you all have a bunch of stuff. Now, I'm going to be really honest with you, and I don't mean to offend. An ag teacher does not have time to go to eight different locations and find the materials, the skills, the competencies, the stuff that he or she ought to be using in teaching safety and health, hazardous operations, yada, yada, yada. So where is the place that we can direct our teacher educators as well as our teachers in getting the materials and the wherewithal to do this correctly and, and right? I think the say curriculum uh, activity, uh, Dr. Jepson, that we're working on, I think that's a, that's a great start there. But it is really important, I believe, for us to be able to show teachers and to give the teachers, this is the one location that you can get the materials because they don't have time to create them on their own. Thanks.